So there was a highly developed food system here in the States already, just no one knew because we came, or Americans came from such a European mindset, uh -huh. if you will. about a lot is the concept of superfoods. So when mm -hmm. we think superfoods, like what do you think? Acai berries, yeah. goji berries. Yeah. It's always things that are not from here, but we have superfoods like here. Uh, we just mountains. don't know about it. We just it. don't know because yeah. we've been, we've colonized this land and- Exactly, it's not our land. Yeah, we continue to colonize You're other right. lands. And as a result, it's creating this weird thing where like people in China are now, they want acai berry and things from, you know, Brazil and Latin America, right. and they're not prioritizing their own superfoods. Mm. And so decolonizing the food system really means looking at what's at your land and what grows there and how you can eat it. And a lot of these plants I'm going to show you today, they've evolved here for thousands and thousands of years. So they have a lot of nutrition and the Native Americans who lived here tended to the wild. So they bred them for the optimal like eating purposes. Whenever I'm with native people around the world their message that they want me to tell the world is like we are here we exist stop talking about us like we are the past right and yeah so there's tons of books i can send you to the links if you're interested it's so fascinating <laughs> I'm Clarissa. I'm a freelance journalist and I spend a lot of time here in the mountains, here in the San Gabriel Valley. This area is mostly chaparral and oak coast shrub and there's a lot of great edible plants. So I'm going to take you guys up and show you guys some of these plants. Okay, so this is wild buckwheat and um, when it's like not <laughs> ready it's the white flower so you don't want to eat that but right now these like dark brown maroon colors you just pluck it off and then this all of this you can just mix it with one part pancake mix and one part buckwheat and you have buckwheat pancakes <laughs> so this is buckwheat yeah <laughs> oh cool yep. and you can make like noodles um no it's not <laughs> the same type as the japanese one oh, so it's nuttier and it doesn't have gluten in it okay but okay. it has the same like it's a very similar like nutty taste okay. and you can make biscuits with this right. i like to do pancakes mm -hmm. and it just like adds more nutrition to your pancakes or adds a nutty flavor right cool so, yeah if you want to make cookies now is the time to harvest when so when it's brown the, yeah this color so what I do is I will just take a little Ziploc bag of this and then I'll mix it with um, a Trader Joe's pancake mix. So you'll go on a hike and you'll learn the plant and then you'll forget. Mm -hmm. But then you just keep on going and then I do sometimes the same trail over and over again and then you can see how they change. Right. And the cool thing is like the plants sort of become your friends. And then it's like, oh, now you're brown. Or Oh, yeah. Like, like, do you find yourself talking to them? Yeah. I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> I do that with flowers. Well, <laughs> I just did a video on this on my Facebook, but I'll show you. It looks you. like it's a sea amazing. urchin. This is a wild cucumber, and it grows on those vines that you see that are dead on that tree. Okay. And what you do, and I'll make this for you, and you can take it home. You take off the spikes, and it becomes a loofah. <gasps> like a natural? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and so loofah is made out of sigua, which is like a Chinese gourd, and mm -hmm. it's the same thing, but the thing is, like, if you use it long enough, it harbors bacteria, but people are too, like, clingy to throw right. it away. Right, But this, look how many there, like, there's one there, there's one there. You can just, oh. like, take home a bunch of loofah. I use this to just, like, wash my feet. Right. Because <laughs> then I can throw it away and not feel bad about it. It comes from this dead vine. Oh. And so summer is the time that you come out and harvest your loofah. <laughs> You should bring like a bunch of girls cool, here to like these flowers um, when they are ripe You can deep fry it like zucchini blossoms. Okay, the Mexicans eat it This one yucca. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've heard of yucca everywhere. Um, when yeah. they're bright white You can just deep fry them at, like tempura nice and it tastes like zucchini blossoms Okay, so smell this or oh, you can smell my hand. If okay you don't touch it. Ooh, it smells good. This is cowboy cologne 
Ooh. It's Artemisia Californica. It's um, California sagebrush. And yeah, I actually put it in our water today that we're gonna drink. Nice. Like, grow one at home. And it's just, it smells really good. Um, it's like, it has antiseptic properties, but it's also like a medicine. You can use it as sage and burn it. And it's like an, it's a very versatile plant. So it's an herb. Mm hmm. It's an herb. But you can, um, another popular use is you can dehydrate it. It's already it dry now. It smells kind of minty. Yeah. You can dehydrate it mm -hmm. and like put it with salt and you can like, it's kind of like rosemary, right? So you can right. like, salt your meats with this. Right. It's kind of like everyone sticks to the same old herbs and spices when there's so exactly. many more. Exactly. This is what I mean by decolonizing our food system. <laughs> <laughs> like this is what I've been talking like, about. This is, yeah. I'm so glad you see it because this is our home, right? Like this is Los Angeles and these are our neighbors. Right. So easily grown. Yeah. Said we're we're using, just not being efficient. Yeah. We're using like spices from faraway places and ignoring these things. Right. Oh, it's white it's, sage. This okay, is what the this is sage. Hipsters burn or the hippies oh. burn. So it's good for like detox, like um, clearing Detoxing? the air. Okay, nice. And it's also a mosquito repellent. Okay, but I like it for its lemony scent. Right. So you can make salad dressing out of it. You can put in your lemonade. Mm -hmm. I like to make a smoothie with it. Oh, nice. <laughs> like the most common use for it is to dry it, and then you will burn it, and then it'll create the scent in your mm -hmm. room like incense basically right. and so like as Chinese people we incense is a part of our culture but Native Americans incense was also a part of their culture mm -hmm. and this was the main incense nice. for California <laughs> nice white yeah. sage and it like clears the energy clears the air and so if you're moving into a new place or if you're feeling stressed out and you want to just like clear the space or before any ceremony you burn this okay yeah An acorn tree oh so, let me see if I can find it before You basically will like peel it like this. This one's not ready yet. But anyways, you peel it and then there's this part inside, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll mush it and then you'll pour boiling water on it to right. leach it because there's toxins in okay. it. And then it becomes a flour and you can make bread. Oh, And that was the staple of the Indians here because it's So their flour came it's... from acorns, yeah. the carbs. <laughs> oh, nice. And this is the season now. And I don't know, I read stories and like I always cry when I read these stories too because it's like the women, they gather and they spend all day like gathering the acorns and then they like store it in a bucket and then they'll make the flour and then they'll heat it on, um, they obviously didn't have stoves then so they heat up hot rocks mm -hmm. and then they um, make the acorn flour on it and then they put that bread into cold water and then it turns into a bread. Okay. Yeah, because the cold water, that shock between hot and right. cold, turns it into a bread. And That's that was so cool. their staple. And it was this whole, like, just imagine a village of ladies working, sitting Picking around acorns. this tree. All, yeah, mashing them. Yeah. It's yeah. like community working with your hand, and it's this wonderful tree that we ignore now. Right. And, like, the only people still using it, or the only thing still using it, are squirrels. So you take a picture of it and it'll tell you? Yeah. No. Technology is amazing, right? No. This is like Pokemon Go to me. Oh my gosh. Because this is better than like translating on the spot because it's, it's nature. Yeah. And then if you look at a map, you'll see other people's logs of what oh. they see in the area. It's called what? I nature? I naturalist. Oh, I naturalist. Yeah. I feel like I see this plant or something like this. It's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. This is the plant that will save your life. You're stuck. Okay. So I make bracelets out of oh. it. But it's also a soap, which I think is cool. Cause Why, I don't, like just add water? Yeah, I'll do it and then I'll show you. It's like suds come out, there's mm -hmm. a chemical, like the sapins. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have antiseptic properties, but if you put like the sagebrush I showed you, mm -hmm. and you mix it with this, you basically can give yourself a very clean a shower. shower. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. With the loofah. <laughs> yeah, with the loofah. <laughs> right? It's yeah. Like, people are like, I don't, I want to be able to take a shower in the wilderness. Yeah, you can if you like know. If you know which one. Is it called yucca? Yeah, it's called yucca. So the so flowers are one. edible. The roots. So are the flowers edible. grow out of this yeah, when it does it grow. So it can be a soap. Just add water. 
if you like braid it, you have a soap stick. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it's really handy to have around when you're like hiking or, or kind of like camping, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, now I have a bunch of soap on my hand, but yeah. Like, wow. I made soap out of nothing <laughs> and we have a loofah. <laughs> <laughs> That Be- nature <laughs> beauty <laughs> DIYs. I know, right? Oh my gosh, this could be a real video. I'm, I'm gonna make it's this. It's like mind blowing, people. Um, but this, um, if you break it out fine enough, you have fibers. Okay. Right? And then if you have you fibers, can you can make, um, I've made bracelets out mm-hmm. of it. If you're stranded, you can make a rope, you can mm-hmm. make a hammock, you can make shoes. Okay. Yeah. And so, shoes, just by like threading it and like, a lot of weaving these. it. So it would be like this. Like you would do this. And so right. like look how strong that is. Right, we? right. Oh, I see. I can see. Yeah. You can make like baskets and stuff. Yeah, baskets. And like it's super strong. Right. And it just comes from this marvelous plant. And you can use this to poke people or you can use it to sew things. <laughs> like I think they use this as a sewing needle. Like seriously. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure they also used it to poke people as mm-hmm. well. I'm gonna go there, um, but have like a topic I'm really interested in. Right. So in Yunnan, it's gonna be mushrooms. So everything okay. I'm gonna do is gonna revolve around Aww. learning more about mushrooms. Cool. So yeah, I think if you like travel to a place with the intention of wanting to learn about a specific topic, then you get further. Right. That's and true. So, Instead of just like going there and wandering yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the same <sighs> with the mountains, right? If you're just like here, you're just like dead. Yeah. Plants, a tree. Right. Like I've never gone hiking and really looked at the plants before. Exactly. <laughs> Me neither until yeah. like a couple years ago. I hated nature. I was like a city girl. Yeah. I like hated getting dirty and sweaty. I know. You came from like the New York <laughs> yeah. hush life. And I was like raised in the St. Gabriel Valley. Yeah. Um, but then once you realize like this is a pancake. <laughs> this like, is a pancake. That's so then it's like it's like shopping and I think it like oh. um hits some of those like chemicals in your brain that happens yes. when you're in the mall and you're mm-hmm. like you just want to browse like I feel like that here like oh my god we're like window shopping for food we are window <laughs> shopping <laughs> live yeah. food it's, I love that and like the cool thing is like sometimes you'll see something that's really cool but you don't know what it is but it looks familiar and so you just take out your like yeah <laughs> it's like a pokédex it's a pokemon <laughs> yeah yeah you totally have a journalist mind like you're just so curious and yeah. you go out and you find out what you're but curious also, about like, i'm sure you can relate to find new content yeah you have to like put yourself out there true you have to constantly yeah. be learning because if exactly because mm-hmm. if you're stagnant and you're just like with the same people in the same places and you're not learning then you're just eventually you're, you're gonna hit a wall that's so true i've said that before in my videos too like i constantly feel like i have to be meeting people reading books yeah or else i just won't have yeah. anything to talk about exactly and yeah. also like take a risk so i was reading this book called one star revolution by this like revolutionary farmer uh-huh. and i like read the foreword and i like googled who wrote the forward and I found out he had a workshop in Spain so I went to Spain. That's cool. And I took the workshop. And then you just meet more people and then you go into this extreme rabbit hole when you're just constantly <laughs> learning things. And then you're not a normal person yeah, anymore. And you're not a normal person you don't know how to communicate this to the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's that? It's an acorn. <laughs> I just find them so cute. <laughs> I think you're so cute. Okay, just stay there and enjoy your acorn because the lighting is so nice here. <laughs> is this the pancakes again? They're yeah. so red here. Yeah. You um, see it exactly how I see it. I just say pancakes. <laughs> then friends are like, what? Like, <laughs> you gotta explain like, it. I don't know the scientific name. Yeah, this is this is the top. This is it. Fields of pancakes <laughs> surrounded by raisins. Right. <laughs> and cactus. There's so much food everywhere and acorn. <laughs> I just see food, I can't this help it. This is your food court. Just, yeah, it's a freaking food court, people. I'm not advocating for people to come and like pick things en masse, but it's like cool to like have a knowledge. Yeah. And just like appreciate. 
So we have sagebrush, which is the cowboy cologne, white sage, mint, um, passion fruit. And so the passion fruit, it's passion fruit leaf, which helps you sleep. And then the other three things that I named, um, <laughs> I grow in my garden, and this is lemon. Nice. So most of these are, you know, from this area, from Los Angeles. Thank Actually, you. Actually, all of this is from Los Angeles. Native teas. Yeah, native tea. Native iced tea. What's your one message you want everyone to leave with here? It's possible for everyone to interact with nature even if you know nothing about it. Um, just go out there and look at a plant and if you want to know more about it, just take a photo and look it up online. I think if you just start from one plant, you can go from there. Think of it as like collecting your friends <laughs> or collecting yeah. a treasure trove full of intimate objects that you care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yay, thanks.